Alright, you guys, go ahead and relax. Grab your bolster and lay back. You can either lay, if you don't have a bolster, you can lay on your mat. And grab your blocks to help support your knees. Coming into Baddha Konasana, you can keep your feet together. Bolster in the back of the spine, exhaling all the way down. Relax the shoulders. You can have your arms out to the side to close those eyes. You can also lay your legs out in front if you want to relax and recline in that fashion, or you can have your knees together, feet apart. Close those eyes and just settle your breath. Focusing on your tip of the nose. Slow your breath down. Focusing now on your third eye, the point between the brow. Looking internally, gazing internally. Coming to an inspiration for your practice, forming an intention whether it is just to relax, ease into the body for the morning. Slowly breathe in each molecule through each nostril. Filling up those lungs, tracing that molecule down past the throat, down the passage, past the trachea, larynx, all the way down toward the bron branches, the bronchi, into each side of your lungs. Into your right side has your three lobes. Your left side has two lobes, filling those lobes all the way up. Increasing the capacity, hold it at the very top. And then exhale gently through, allow your belly to relax. And then trace any excess oxygen, excess air going out past the lungs, past the throat. We only use about 16 to 20% of our air. The rest is all residuals. And that's why you know you have those deep divers can go a little longer underwater. And with practice, you're doing this thing. You're inhaling all the way to the top of the lungs. Hold at the very top. Sip a little bit more air in. Relax the shoulders, keep holding your breath. And then exhale out through the mouth. One big, big puff. Relax your arm, relax your shoulder, close those eyes. And with that intention in your mind, that a relaxation or maybe cleanliness, you're cleaning the mind or ahimsa nonviolence, or ashtaya, which is uh, sapa, which is true. Ashtaya is, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> Tip of my tongue, but thinking good thoughts for your practice. So inhaling all the way to the very, very top. Sealing that intention in with your breath, keep holding. Sip a little bit more air in. Keep holding. And then exhale out, two big puffs out of the mouth. Feeling that, that reverberation of, of your practice, your pranayama practice here, sealing your knees together or rolling off the side of the bolster, coming onto your back, removing the bolster, coming flat on your back. Allow the palms to rest alongside, close those eyes. And then blink your eyes open, inhale those arms up to the sky, reaching for the sky, lifting up those shoulders, rock and roll those wrists, wiggle those fingers. Here you can even interlace the fingers and kind of stretch your palms upward. Just to get those knuckles all lubricated here. And then exhale, release those palms over the head. Stretching, pointing your toes, yawning, full stretching. 
and then grabbing your left wrist, pull it over to the right side of the body, right side corner. Breathe in to your left lateral side. You can even walk your heels over to the right corner of that bottom mat. The full side stretch and banana asana. You can even stack your, your ankles. You want a little extra. Close those eyes and breathe into this juiciness. And then inhaling, walking back the heels, inhaling, reaching, breathing, grabbing your right wrist, pull it over to your left corner. And walking the heels all the way to the left corner mat. Breathe along your right lung. Slow your breath down. We can even stack the ankles again. Close those eyes. Take that time to feel that breath into your side body. And slowly walk the heels back in, straighten up those fingers, reaching again to the very top. And then exhale, pull your right knee into your right armpit toward that nipple line here. You can rock and roll, wiggle those toes, rock and roll those ankles, both of them if you like. And now imagine standing on that left leg, close those eyes. This is Arda Apasana, half wind relieving pose. And then we can leave that left hand on that left belly. Feel for that belly breath. You're listening for that ujjayi breath, that ocean sound behind the throat. as if you're fogging up a mirror. And then pulling that right knee out to the right side here, you can keep your feet flat. Now observe and close those eyes. Observe any tightness in the glutes and the groin, your opposite leg. You can feel for that belly breath. Slow your breath down. And then inhaling that knee back toward the center Reaching for a belt, you can place it on the sole of your right foot. If you don't have a belt, you can use your peace fingers of your right hand. Grab that big right toe. Left hand on that left hip. You can kick your right foot up to the sky. You can have a big bend in your, your top knee, if you like. And then just try to pull the toes, the top toes closer toward your forehead and imagine standing on that left leg still. Now here, if you want to challenge yourself, straighten out that top knee. Now observing any tightness in the right glute, anything that you're feeling in the left thigh, keep imagining you're standing on that left leg. Take that full deep breath in. We're in, in a big toe hold, A. The Upa, this, this is a... <laughs> Upa Vista Kanas. No, this is, <laughs> I can't think of my names right now, but this is your big toe hold, Gustasana. <laughs> Sutta Gustasana. And then exhale, drop that leg over to the right side here. You can place a block underneath your right ankle if you like, like so. And rotate that right pinky toe downward. And keep placing that left hand on that left hip to ground that pelvis. Or you can even extend that left arm out to the side and close those eyes. Imagine standing on that left leg still. Breathe across the heart space. Slow your breath down. Breathe all the way down to your belly. All the way down to your feet. So imagine taking your breath all the way past your foot your bottom foot. And keep rotating that right pinky toe. Just open those abductors, those AB ductors. Part of your hip flexors, but it helps um, take your legs away from each other. Gives you a little bit more range of motion. And slowly, slowly inhale that leg back up to the sky, swapping hands on that belt. You can bend that bottom knee, scoot your hips slightly over to the right, extend that right arm out, extend the bottom leg back down, and then exhale, dropping that top leg over to the left and top and twist 
up the belly. Help round that right shoulder. If you need a block or bolster again, to support your, your right leg. This is good for your IT band stretch here on your right outer hip. So reclining here, close those eyes and imagine again, standing on that left foot. Helping that twist, allow that belly to relax. Keep closing those eyes and breathe across your chest, breathe across the heart space. Slow your breath. Listen for that breath. Listen for it behind the throat. Sounds like the ocean. It's like saw and a hum sound. I'm taking that leg back up to the sky, releasing that right leg. Allow it to lay side by side, straighten up your spine. Allow the palms to relax side by side of your hips and palms facing up, relax the shoulders. Coming into that Shavasana. Close those eyes. Take that breath in and then pull your heels together. Now observing by revving the feet, which one's longer. Observing that, notice the difference. You can even look at your feet. It looks, it looks a little bit more um, longer on the right side for me. So, and blink your eyes open again. Inhale that left knee in toward your heart line or the nipple line and then pulling with both your hands, rock and roll, wiggle those toes. Right hand on that belly, feel for that belly breath. Imagine standing on that right leg and observing any tightness, any holding patterns. And you contract the spaces. And then exhale, pull that left knee out to the left side in this little power stance. You can keep your feet flexed. It's almost like a half squat. Now close those eyes, observe any tightness. You might notice the difference between right leg versus left leg. There's always a difference because we're always favoring one side. So we're giving equal attention, giving space building space for each. And then listen for that ujjayi breath, feeling for that belly breath, inhaling that leg back toward the center, that knee toward the center. Again, reaching for the belt and place it on the sole of your left foot. And kick your, your foot up to the sky. Flex the feet. Now imagine standing on that right leg. So if you don't have a belt, you can, you can use your peace fingers on your left hand, grab that big toe, and you can have that big micro bend in that top knee. Right hand on that right hand, imagine standing on that right leg and then pull the toes a little closer toward your forehead. Get that full stretch of that left glute. So your hamstrings are connected there. Just breathing in, getting that hamstring stretch. You're trying to straighten out that knee even. And then here, pull the toes a little closer toward your forehead. Imagine still standing on that right leg. So you're feeling your right thigh stretch as well. Don't forget to breathe. And then here, exhale, swing that left leg open like a door saloon, a saloon door. <laughs> Rotate that left pinky toe downward here. Again, if you need a block to self-adjust, go ahead, baby yourself. Sometimes you need it because it feels good. Uh, just relax here. You can extend that right arm out to the side, even relax your shoulders. Close those eyes. Imagine standing on that right foot. Slow your breath down. Imagine floating on your big lily pot, lily pond pad hanging out with your lily pad friends, getting your lily pad drinks and cocktails or mocktails, Just enjoying this beautiful day, enjoying every second of air that you breathe, drawing that delicious air. 
feel that quality of the air. Is it cool? Is it smooth? Is it oily? Is it dry? Is it cold? Is it moist? Is it wet? Just observe the quality of the air. And then here, inhaling that leg back up to the sky, swapping hands on that, that belt or foot. Here you can even bend that bottom knee, scoop the hips slightly over to the left, and extend that leg back down, extend that left arm out to the side, and then exhale, drop that left leg over to the right side. Again, if you need a block nearby, you can quickly grab one just to rest your ankle, your left ankle on. Just close those eyes and try to ground that left shoulder. So twisting across the belly. And imagine standing on that right leg. But if you actually are standing on your right leg, this would be quite a balancing challenge that we might end up doing. But we're gonna be very, very gentle today. Just allow your heart to relax. Breathe across that space. You're emanating that oxygen from your heart. Always oh, just imagine it spreading through your arms out to your fingertips. And slowly, slowly inhale that leg back up to the sky. Release that foot. Allow your legs to relax side by side and straighten out the spine, palms facing up. Close those eyes, feeling that reverberation of your actions. Now pull your heels in toward each other. Now rub your feet together. You can even observe, either, are they both equally long? Are they both equally stretched out? You can even look at your feet. Are they both equally standing at the same height, same length? And then blink your eyes open. Inhale your knees back into your heart. Rock left and right, massaging the side bodies. A full side body massage, getting your little self massage on, cooling the knees in closer. This is a pasna wind relieving pose. Now pull your knees apart. Now grab your ankles if you want. You can grab the soles of your feet and start kicking left and kick right. Kicking back and forth, side to side. This is the Nanda Balasana, happy baby pose. Nanda is like lucid. Balasana, Bala means child, but Bala means strength in Sanskrit. So you're gonna rock and left and right. Open up those hips. Here. Keeping a hold of both your feet, open up wide. It's almost like a V. So getting that full stretch of those abductors. Now, sealing the feet together, binding the toes, kind of you can start wiggling your knees up and down te technically. So, this is like a butterfly. So, it's warming up your hips. <laughs> and then grabbing the feet, we're going to rock up and down the spine, keeping the chin to the chest if your neck allows. Just getting the full back massage and then rolling up to a seated position. Crossing your ankles. We can have Siddhasana or Sukhasana where your ankles are crossed like Indian style or one ankle in front of each other and pull the flesh out from the back. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching, look toward the thumbs, reaching and breathing, lengthening through those fingertips. Exhale, hands out in front, inhaling through the crown. Exhale, walk the hands out, hinging at the hips. You can keep your feet flexed. You can use knees, uh, blocks for your knees if you need support. We're doing a four full, so inhaling through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out, hinge at the hips. Isn't that how deep you go? It's all about hinging at the hips. So your hands are to support your spine. So here. So every breath in, exhale, walk those fingers out. So close your eyes if you want to internally gaze. Inhale through the crown. Come out of that pose slightly. Exhale, keep walking those fingers. So follow your breath. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out. 
slow your breath down. So breathe into your back. And then here, keep reaching, keep breathing, and exhale, walk the hand slightly over to your far left, grabbing your left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling to reach and stretch. Exhale, walk the hands all the way to your far right, grabbing your right hand with the left. So breathe into your left lung. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, pressing back up. Now uncross, cross the opposite way. Pull the flesh out from the backside. Settling into your sit bones here. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. Look toward the thumbs, relax the throat, and then inhale, lengthen through those fingertips. Breathing here, exhale, hands out in front. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out. So hinging at the hips again. Inhale, breathe into your back. Exhale, walk those fingers out to support your spine. So keep closing those eyes. Keep breathing to the back. Exhale, keep walking those fingers out until you get the full stretch of your back. So breathe into your back. So breathe and lengthen and reach. And then once you're there, exhale, walk the hands all the way to your far left, grabbing that left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung. Exhale, walk the hands back toward the center. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, walk the hands all the way to your far right and grab that right hand with the left. Breathe into your left lung. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, pressing back up. Let's pull this up so you can see me better. So hands on the waist. Do a little, um, little tiny head roll. So one direction. So if your hands on the hips, relax your shoulders. Be mindful of what direction. Are you going clockwise or counterclockwise? Just little tiny, tiny circles that lubricate the top of your atlas. So if you hear any clicking, you're just going to lubricating, screwing your head back on. So making sure you're sitting tall in your spine. And then slow your roll, big circles. Slow down your roll. So the tighter your neck is, the slower you go. And you're breathing into your tightness of your neck. And if you sleep on one side too long, you might be feeling it. You can just close those eyes, observe. A little Ayurveda, exhale, dropping the chin to the chest, hands on the waist. We're gonna take your fingers and press firmly into your, abdo your abdominus muscles, your core muscles here. We're gonna pull your elbows in, roll your pelvis, spreading the skin of your back, and then here, pressing firmly into the core. So a little nali, this is part of Ayurveda. So it activates the juices. And then drop your head into your left shoulder, stretching the back of your skin between your shoulder blades. And then quickly release. Good job. Now hands on the waist again. I'm gonna grab your block onto your right side and place it right beside your right hip. Hands on the waist, inhale nice and tall. And then exhale, dropping your right elbow toward that block. You're getting that, try to make sure your sit bones are seated. If you want a little practice stretching it all the way down, you can remove that block. That's up to you. Or you can rewind, you can grab that block underneath that elbow again. We're gonna inhale that left arm up to the sky. Point and shoot. So having that point and shoot mudra, point and shoot to the sky. So you're feeling the energy of your sit bones through your body into that little energy gun we got in your fingers and then exhale over our ears. Get the full side stretch and turn your heart up to the sky. The sky. I keep on saying skun. <laughs> your, your sun or sky. <laughs> Take that top hand and grab the back of your skull. So you're lengthening the spine. Feeling that full stretch of your, your left armpit. Now make a fist with your top hand behind the skull. We're gonna inhale, look up toward your top bicep and watch 
do pump your top bicep. So this is part of Kriya Yoga. You're telling your one particular muscle what to do. And then exhale, look down toward the ground. Taking that top hand, wrap it behind your back into a half bind. Try to reach the opposite wrist. Here, look toward the ground. Here, you can even drop your right ear toward your right shoulder if you like. And close those eyes. Enjoy the stretch of your neck. And then slowly, slowly inhale. Look toward the middle of the room and up to the sky. Hands on the waist, inhaling back up. Good job. Uncross, cross the opposite way. You can take the block, place it on the opposite side. Hands on the waist, a little nolly. So if you remember, if you were doing clockwise with your head rolls, try counterclockwise. And close those eyes, do those little tiny gentle circles. Again, screwing on the neck. And if you hear any crunching sounds more so than the other one, you're, you know you're, uh, your neck does some funny things. Make sure you're sitting nice and tall. And then slow your roll. Nice big circles. Again, breathe into your neck. And the tighter it is, again, the slower you go. You're breathing in oxygen into the sinewy parts of your neck. And your brain is connected to that stem. And it's very important to make sure it's nice and screwed on. Eventually, you're going to exhale, drop your chin to the chest, hands on the waist again. Inhale tall, exhale, press firmly into the core. You're hooking the fingers into the rectus abdominis, rolling the pelvis. You're going to pull your elbows in toward each other and then let your head again drop into the lap. You're spreading the skin of the back. So this is Nolly. So you're activating the juices of your core. So it's almost like a, a marma point. So it's a pressure point. You're activating the organs. And then quickly release. So it builds up that Agni, the fire in your belly for, for ready for lunch. <laughs> so your digestive juices are like, hey, wake up. Now hands on the waist, hands on the, the waist to inhale nice and tall. And then you have your block on your left side. We're gonna exhale, drop your left elbow down toward that block. And if you want to practice without one, you can try to reach. I got long arms, so um, as long as your sit bones are seated, you're going to inhale that right hand up to the sky. Again, we're going to point and shoot the energy from our sit bones all the way through our spine, all the way to the top of our fingertips. And then exhale that top hand over the ear. And then turn the heart up to the sky. Keep breathing. Feel that stretch alongside the body. And then here you can take that top hand and grab the back of the skull to elongate the spine. They're helping that spine get longer. Breathing here into your right armpit. Now make a fist behind your skull with that top hand. And then now inhale, look up and pump your top bicep. Your right bicep's dancing. Now exhale, look down toward the ground and then take that top hand, wrap it behind the back. Again, try to reach that back hand toward that opposite wrist and allow your shoulders, allow your, your stretching your neck to relax and breathe in. You can even drop your left ear toward that left shoulder, get the full stretch of the neck. Breathing slowly. And then gently look toward the middle of the room, up to the sky, hands on the waist, inhaling back up. Good job. Now take your feet together, wrap the toes together, binding them, pulling the heels in closer toward the groin. You can even wiggle left and right just to get your sit bones all seated. Coming into Baddha Konasana. So cobbler's pose or bound angle pose is uh, Baddha. Konasana is angle. Inhale tall. Nice and long breath in, exhale, forward fold. You're gently pulling your heart toward the toes. Breathing into your back, close those eyes. Every breath in and every breath out, you can slowly, slowly allow your heart to drop. If you don't feel a drop, you can allow your legs, your groin area to release. Just relax. 
Breathe into your back. Slow your breath down and slowly inhaling back up. Now, shoving your, your thumbs into the bottoms and soles of your feet, you're gonna wrap your fingers onto the top of your feet and then you're gonna exhale, press your elbows into your inner thighs and then open up your feet like a hinged, on a hinge of your lateral foot, like a book. You open up like a book. If you're wearing socks, you're gonna see fuzz lines. If you're not wearing socks, you're gonna see soul lines. So we're gonna read your soul. We're gonna give a little massage, massaging your big toe ringing it if you want, and then here your second toe and then your middle toe, all the way down to your ring and then pinky, and then you're gonna massage the second knuckle. So in reflexology, that would be your neck. You're massaging your brain and now we're doing the neck. And then now you're taking your big, th your big thumbs and massaging the top part of your feet. So this is your lungs, reflexology. So it's always great to get the sensations going, get the circulation going. And then down the center, imagine there's a spine. So you're gonna press firmly into the middle of your top foot and that would be the heart. And then either side, a little further bottom below the heart would be the kidneys and the pancreas, or actually not kidneys, pancreas and liver, <laughs> excuse me. And then a little further down below the spine, either side would be the kidneys and you press firmly. And then big, big circles into the center of the foot. And Qigong, this would be the center of life the spring of life. So you're massaging the GI tract. And then all the way down, down, a little lower, would be the, the, the knees. And then down below will be the heel of the heel. So literally your feet. And then inhaling back up. Now take your feet out wider like a diamond, pulling the flesh out from the backside. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching, breathing. And then exhale, bowing down here. You can wrap your hands around your toes again. You can plow your palms to the ground if you want. Close those eyes. And if your neck allows, you can drop your chin to your chest. Allow your knees to drop. You can rock your ears left and right. Got the bowling ball of the head. And that neck stretch helps. And then slowly, slowly inhaling back up. Now extend those legs out. We're gonna do a little self-massage. So making fist, we're gonna start with your right foot. We're gonna massage, bend down and try to massage your feet. You can bend those knees. Massage the ankles all the way up to your thighs. So from your calves all the way up to your right thigh. You can hear it, that's a good massage. So you're activating all the marble points as well. And then around the belly. So massaging the belly and then across the chest and then underneath your armpits and then massaging around and then now down to your left leg your left thigh and all the way down to your calf and all the way down to your feet so you're activating massaging you're actually activating your lymph system so you're kind of waking up that lymph lymphedema is a, a thing so go ahead take the back of your palms Massage the back of your glutes. So massaging the back of your kidneys. Let's get the self-massage. And then here, taking, <laughs> taking your fist, kind of massage your right shoulder. Feel that nice massage all the way down to your right bicep and tricep underneath your armpits. So armpits con contains a lot of your lymph. And your right arm, right forearm, and your fist and then top of the fist and swapping hands onto your left side, left forearm, left, left bicep and triceps, and then your left shoulder. Ah, that's feel good. Now your fingertips massaging your thyroid. So close those eyes and massage the thyroid. And then all the way to the back of your neck, kind of tapping it away. Enjoy this and close those eyes if you like. And then massage the back of the, the head, so your, your temporal and your um, temporal region, I'm trying to remember your frontal and your occipital, so this would be your occipital region. And then all the way to the top of your crown, to the very, very top. And then close those eyes, 
and then massaging your forehead and your right and left side of the temple and then around your your chin and then here taking your two-piece fingers we're going to massage the point between below your ear and above your ear that will be your tmj your temporal mandibular joint we talk a lot <laughs> we're gonna relax the jaw good job and then even uh in front of your ear and then below some more just around the ears and then you're going to take your pinchers and you're going to pinch the top of the pina of your earlobe so the top of the earlobe all the way down to your your uh, bottom lobe so those are a lot of these marmo points here you're going to take your pointer finger you're going to poke inside plug up your ears and then release that is actually another marmo point <laughs> now kind of rub away the germs and then again tapping from the very top of the crown close those eyes and then tap gently onto your forehead close your eyelids gently tap your eyelids gently tap your your cheek and your chin and then again rubbing your hands together close your eyes they're killing all the germs killing you any germs you can think of like coronavirus and then close those eyes and palm the eyelids feel the warmth of those palms take a deep breath in and then release the hands Whew. good job take the legs out wide so you can support it by the corners of your yoga mat and pull the flesh out from the back side keep those toes pointed up so inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. Exhale, hands out in front again. Inhale through the crown. Keep those toes pointed up. We're going to exhale, walk those hands out. This gets your, your abductor stretch out. Inhale through the crown. If you need to bend those knees, you can. And then exhale, keep walking those hands out. Breathe into the back. Slow your breath down. Keep those toes pointed up. So inhale through the crown and you might not hinge that far you might not go that far but observe you're in square one so you're going to observe how many times you do this in a week and how much further every week and week you're progressing so keep that observation keep those toes pointed up inhale through the crown and exhale walk those fingers out if you can so breathe into the back keep pointing those toes up you might notice how much you might change. So observe where you're at. So close those eyes, keep breathing, keep walking. All right, slowly, slowly inhaling back up, keeping those toes pointed up. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, dropping your left elbow in front of that left knee. Top hand over the ears, turn the heart up to the sky. So the top hand, keep breathing and reaching. Eventually you might grab that uh, left toe, but you don't have to, because we're just gonna breathe and reach. Shooting your top hand open like a rainbow. And this actually increases the length of your lateral, your arms, your shoulders, your spine. The more we're like tightly bound yoga nuggets, we're stretching, we're getting more range of motion and slowly, slowly inhaling back up nice and long. Breathe and reach. Exhale, dropping your right elbow in front of that right knee, top hand over the ear, and breathe and point and shoot that top arm like a rainbow. Turn the heart up to the sky. Breathing here, nice and long. Eventually, you might take that top hand and reach for those, those right toes. And then slowly, slowly inhale, arms up again. Exhale, look twist and look toward your left foot we're going to exhale grab either the ankle big toe little toe and if you need a belt you can use a belt and you're bowing down your forehead toward that left knee your sit bones raised up that's totally fine again this is a nice stretch for that back you can feel it around along your right side you might feel it in your your hamstrings too 
And slow your breath down. Listen for that breath. That ujjayi, that victorious sound. Ujjayi breath. You don't want to bounce. You want to nice and slowly get there. And when you're done, inhaling back up. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. We're going to exhale, twist and look toward your right foot. We're going to exhale, bow down that leg. You grab your belly, you grab your ankle or big toe, little toe. We're going to exhale, drop your forehead toward that right knee. So this is all Upavisna Kanasana. So wide seated angle pose. This is a variation. Pavrita means side. Twisted. So breathing into your back. Slow your breath down. And slowly, slowly inhaling up. Crossing your ankles. We're going to come onto your hands and knees. If it's too much on your knees, you can double up on the mat if you like. Like so. Or I've even learned you can even use blocks underneath your knees. This also helps. <laughs> So spreading the palms, fingers spread nice and wide, palms underneath your armpits, knees underneath your hips. Here you can even shake your hips left and right, kind of open up those hips. You can sway your head left and right. Just wiggle your tushy, kind of waking up the spine. And then here we're going to inhale, drawing big circles. And then exhale, circle the opposite way. And then coming back to stillness, coming back into tabletop. So engage the core, tuck the tailbone, pull your shoulders away from the ears. Focus on a point in front of you that's not moving. It's called a dristi, focus point. So engaging the core. I'm gonna inhale, chin up, drop the belly, coming into cow. I'm gonna exhale, pull the belly in, look toward your belly button, cave in your chest, coming into cat. Inhaling back up, exhale, Pulling back, inhaling back up one more time, and then exhale, coming back to neutral spine. That was a little spine warmer. We're going to pull your knees in toward each other. We're going to exhale, pull back into child's pose. So if, if you ate something, you can pull your knees apart into a wide knee child's pose. We're going to rest here. An extended child's pose. You can press the palms into the mat and pull your sit bones toward your heels. If it's too much, you can use a block between your sit bones and your heels, or you can use a block for your forehead. Just want to gently rest your forehead on a block. It gives you a little bit more space to breathe. If you want also, you can pull your hands beside your hips to relax your shoulders. And close those eyes and breathe into your back. Again, slow your breath down. So counting the seconds of your breath. Is it two to three second inhalation? Are you holding it for a microsecond gently? Exhaling just as slowly and then hold it at the very bottom for a microsecond. If you can increase it three to four seconds or four to five seconds, increase it one extra second for breath. Slow your breath down. And if your feet cramp up, you can untuck or tuck your toes. You can come in and out of this pose anytime. This is your resting pose. Sometimes feet cramp up for intrinsic muscle reasons or lack of calcium, potassium, water, and um, what's the other one? Calcium, potassium, and sodium? Yes, so any of those makes cramping happen. So definitely hydrate throughout the day, make sure you get your micronutrients. But otherwise, it could, you're just building up those intrinsic muscles and allow it to stretch like a ballerina. <laughs> so slow your breath down like a turtle. Land 
tortoise can breathe four breaths per minute, increasing its longevity to 200 years old is average. On average, uh, humans breathe 12 to 20 breaths per minute, but we can slow it down. When you slow down your breath, you slow down your thinking. It's almost a very meditative state. Get to this point of just breathing. You kind of leave all the noise outside world behind. And from here, extending those palms back out in front. If they aren't extending, you can remove the blob. Keep reaching and breathing into the back. Exhale, walk the hands all the way to your left, grabbing that left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, reaching. Exhale, walking the hands all the way to your far right. If your belly is on your right lap, kudos. You're grabbing that right hand, breathe into your left lung in the full side stretch again. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, walking the palms to the top of the mat, dropping your elbows and forearms. Here you can walk the knees underneath the hips. You're gonna exhale, drop your forehead or chin down toward the ground. And then here, allow your heart to melt, coming into puppy pose. And the hop up pose, which is heart pose, the heart opener. Allow your shoulders relax, allow your heart to sink. Rest on your forehead or chin, or if you want, you can use some blocks to help support your elbows if you want a little deeper stretch of your shoulders. You can even take your hands together, namaste, and pull it behind the skull. Get that armpit stretch. I'm gonna exhale, drop down onto your belly button, coming into sphinx. You're spreading those fingers, spreading those palms. Allow your tailbone to relax. You're shaking your tailbone. Lifting through the crown, your elbow might be pulled underneath your armpit or you can pull it further away. Just relax your shoulders, relax the belly. Spread those fingers. Shake your tailbone. It's like a little snake. But this is actually sphinx pose. It's great for a sciatica. Release your glutes. One of my teachers always saying, release your sphincter. And we all giggle. Muscle is one good thing. We're like, stop, stop giggling. <laughs> good job. Now looking forward, you're gonna inhale, lift your chin up, breathing in. Exhale, drop your chin to your chest and rock your ears left and right. Again, all those neck muscles that hold up our 10 to 15 pound head. And then inhaling back to neutral spine, left arm out in front of you. Inhale that right arm up to the sky, breathing here. Exhale, weave underneath your left armpit, walking that left hand to the right. So you're crisscrossing your arms. Here you can even allow your left cheek to rest on your left bicep for the crook of your arms. And then here you bind your arms and give yourself a generous hug. Breathing all the way down to your tailbone. Squeezing yourself. You can give yourself a pat on the back. Congratulate yourself for getting on your mat today. Good job. Waking up out of bed. That's another challenge for some. So go ahead, relax your arms and allow that recline to happen. Allow that space to be created between your shoulder blades. Allow the heart to melt. This gives your arms an extra stretch and your shoulder blades a little bit more space. We have tight shoulders. We hold our stress in our shoulders, our emotions in our hips. An extra challenge here is if you want to pull your, bend your right knee toward your right thigh, you can open up that right hip to get the extra stretch of the armpit stretch. That's optional, you can rewind. <laughs> Back to relaxation mode if you like. Breathe all the way down toward your tailbone. Slow your breath down. You're gonna unwind those arms and then rest on your left cheek, pulling your left hand down to your left hip, 
facing your right hand. Now inhaling that right knee toward your right elbow like Captain Morgan pose, resting here in this reclined, very yin practice called crocodile pose that all my yoga friends now call it Captain Morgan pose. So breathing here, this opens up your right hip, opens up your left shoulder, allows your neck to stretch. Breathing into your back, close those eyes. You can even stretch out those arms or left arm out to the side, bird's wing, palm facing down. So it's right behind your back. You're gonna take your right hand, like a push up hand, right hand in front of your face, bending that right elbow 90 degrees. You're gonna exhale, gently roll onto your left side body. And if you want to grab a block nearby or a pillow, you can. So you're gonna bend that right knee, right leg as a kickstand in front or you can pull it back behind your extended little bottom leg. You're getting that full stretch over your left shoulder and then your right open hip. So behind me, I'll show you this angle. My left hand, palm facing down behind me, right hand in front, and then I'm gonna roll on my left side. You can take that right hand and bind it behind the back. You're getting that full shoulder stretch. Eventually, you might even try to clasp the hands together. Might not be possible if you have tight shoulders, but that's all right. You can just relax to where you're most comfortable. And eventually, exhale, dropping back down onto your belly button, removing any blocks out of the way, resting here, reverse Shavasana, and rest in your palms. Reverse corpse pose. You can shake your tailbone. You can bend the knees and windshield wiper the heels. Get the thigh massage. And eventually drop those heels back down. And then inhale those elbows back under, coming into that sphinx pose. So again, you can pull those elbows underneath the armpits, spread those fingers. And shake the tailbone, lift through the crown. Releasing the glutes, Wait for that sciatica. Right arm across, inhale, left arm up to the sky, breathe here. Exhale, weave it underneath your right armpit. Walking that right hand to the left side. So you're crossing, cross your heart. Here you can rest your right cheek or chin on the crook of your arm or your right bicep. Close those eyes, allow your heart to melt. Breathe into the back. Relax the belly. So you're allowing that little diamond between the shoulders, that rhomboid muscle to spread. Pretty much the point behind the heart is called the brain point in um, Qigong. You're growing the brain. As the Dalai Lama always was questioned by some students, what do you, what is your advice to the future generations? And his is not just to cultivate the mind, because having a smart mind is 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 a, a great thing to have. But if you don't cultivate the heart, um, it can lead to bad things. So you have to cultivate both the brain point and the heart point. Or give yourself another generous hug, tight, tighten that hug up. It's like um, that one Disney movie, King Pimple Grandin. <laughs> she likes to get squeezed by a cow machine she made. So just imagine you're like the cow machine getting squeezed. And then releasing and winding, resting on your right, right cheek, right hand beside your right hip, facing your left hand. Relax there. Inhale that left knee toward that left elbow. Again, relaxing in this reclined Captain Morgan pose. Breathing into your back, feeling the texture of the mat. Breathing into your lungs as if they were part of the ground. Here you can extend that right hand out like a bird's wing, palm facing down, that right hand beside, 
left hand, pushing it like a push-up arm, bending the elbow 90 degrees. And exhale, roll to your right side body. You can grab a block for a pillow if you like. You can bend that left knee behind that extended right leg if you like to open up your hips more or just rewind to where you need to, like a kickstand. And take that left hand and wrap it behind your back and squeeze the shoulders. Open up your heart. Again, slow the breath down. Full breath in. You can even try to clasp those hands if you like. But again, we got some tight shoulders, that's all right. And then exhale, releasing everything back down into your belly button, resting here in Rosh Shavasana, resting in your hands. Breathe into the back. Kind of just observe and absorb everything you've done. And then inhaling those elbows back underneath. And shake the tailbone. We're going to place the palms underneath the armpits. Spread those fingers. We're going to inhale, lift up into all fours to your hands and knees. Spread those fingers. We're going to tuck the toes. We're going to inhale, lift the hips up. Coming into downward dog, take the full length of the mat. So your palms are as wide as your shoulders, if not wider. Your feet are as wide as the hips, if not wide as the mat. Here you can pedal away your heels. You can shake your head and nod. You can sway your hips left and right to the side, get the full side stretch. And then when you come to stillness, you can bend both the knees, point the sit bones up. You can shake your head and nod. And then exhale, drop the heels. Get the full stretch of those calves. So you're engaging the core, your ears or by your armpits. You're dristy. Your focus point could be your belly button or the bottom of your toes. Here, we're gonna now look and gaze between the thumbs, bend the knees. We're gonna slowly walk up, pop up or skip up into a forward fold. Make sure your feet are as wide as the mat if you like. And bend the knees, lay your belly on the lap, grab your elbows, sway left and right. So this is an inversion practice. Anytime, even the downward dog, anytime your head is below the heart. These inversion practices are great for depression, for anxiety, it kind of wakes your mind up. Gets that fresh oxygen to your brain. Swaying back and forth, left and right, opens up the glutes and your hamstrings. Now, come to stillness, wrap the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, keeping the bend in the knees, lay the belly up. Now pull the wrists forward, get into the shoulders, here you can shake your head and nod. Releasing the neck. And then unwind those fingers. Inhale halfway up so your palms are either on your shins or knees, having a flat back. So again, engaging the spine, pulling the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, forward fold. So you went from half forward fold to full, full forward fold. So Ardha Uttanasana to Uttanasana. Now inhale, sprouting on up. So hands to the side. Inhale, hands together. Exhale, hands to the heart. Coming back into the standing pose. Lift all those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. Rowling the shoulders back, engage the core, tuck the tailbone, standing nice and tall. Feel the ground, feel the texture of the mat. Now blink your eyes open, we're gonna grab your balls. So if you have your tennis balls, forgot to even mention that on our supply list, but if you have a sock or whatnot, or tennis ball, tennis balls are great to have nearby. We're gonna massage our feet. So we're gonna place the ball below your right foot. So we're going to rock and roll the tennis ball underneath your right foot, up and down, literally the spine of the feet. <laughs> There's actually nine bones, navicular bones. Um, the 
the peduncles and whatnot. <laughs> so you're gonna massage all the layers of your skin. So you mesoderm, ectoderm, endoderm. So you're kind of going gentle at first, little light pressure. And then we're gonna slowly, slowly add a little pressure. You're gonna open up the foot. And then you're gonna press firmly into the ball. And then you're gonna press the ball underneath your big right toe. So you're gonna open up the, the greater arch almost, and then come across to the middle toe, all the way down to the pinky. And we're gonna go laterally to your right lateral side of your right foot, so opening up that outer arch, and then down to the heel into the inner arch. So be gentle, because that is very sensitive for a lot of people. And be gentle, because we're always wearing shoes. So this opens up your feet, and then back to the center of the middle toe, and to the, from the very top, roll it down gently, down to the middle of your foot. That's that spring of life, the Qigong spring of life, and activating it. And then all the way down, gently, and to the heel. And then coming off the, the, the ball, if it rolls off, that's fine. Coming back into that Samastihi, the equal standing pose, lift all those toes, plant them firmly into the mat, close those eyes, engage the core, tuck the tailbone, roll the shoulders back. Now feeling the difference in sensations of your right foot versus left. You feel that connection to the earth? Do you feel that connection to the mat? The difference between and then blink your eyes open. We're gonna grab that ball again. And we're gonna massage your left foot again. Rock and roll up and down. So different pressure, so go light. Oh, woo, very tender. So, you know, if you wear shoes and you're pumping the brakes, you're pumping your gas pedal a lot, your feet are definitely gonna feel different you're using intrinsic muscles in your feet and maybe one side isn't being used all the time. So you're kind of activating it, desensitizing it, stretching it out. So go a little harder and adding a little bit more pressure. So you're going into the, from ectoderm, the outer layer into the mesoderm and then into the endoderm where you get more sensitive nerves. And then here pressing on underneath the big toe. And then rock it down toward the middle toe. So this is that greater arch. All the way down to the pinky. And then onto the outer arch, nice and gently. Open up the feet all the way down to the heel. Press firmly into the heel and then into the inner arch, nice and slow and gentle because this might be delicate. A lot of sensations to observe. And then back toward the center into the underneath the middle toe. Like kind of wrap your fingers around like a, a frog. And then all the way down to the center. Woo, that spring of life. And all the way down, slowly and gently, all the way down to the heel. Pressing firmly into the heel. And then coming off that ball, coming back and see that Samus T. Hee Hee. Equal standing pose, close those eyes, roll the shoulders back, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, and then tuck the tailbone. Lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat, close those eyes and observe the feet. Are they completely sucking onto the mat? Like a sponge, like a, a grippy frog. But <laughs> now blink your eyes open, inhale arms up to the sky, reaching. Breathing in here, you can even lift the heels up, tippy toes, keep reaching for the stars and you can dance around so that you're activating those calves and eventually exhale, drop your heel and then exhale, four fold. Inhale, halfway up, engaging the core, hands either on your shins or knees, having a flat back. You're using your spinal muscles, infraspinale, supraspinalis. Exhale, four fold again. Inhaling, sprouting hands up to the sky, hands together. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good job. Now we're gonna 
lean over to your right foot. You're gonna inhale that left knee up in space, grabbing that left knee, rocking and rolling, just like we were lying down on our mats. Right hand on that right hip. Focus on a point in front of you. If you fall out, you can fall back in. If you need a wall nearby, use a wall or chair nearby. You're gonna exhale, pull that left knee out to the side, just like you were doing on the ground. Now we're gonna take your hand and walk it to your ankle. You can place your, your left foot into your inner right thigh above the knee or below the knee on the calf. Or you can even kickstand it on the ankle. So whichever you, need, you feel most comfortable, hands together to your heart. If you feel wobbly, wibbly, wibbly, you can always fall in and fall out and come back into this pose. So focus on a point in front of you that's not moving. So you're coming into tree pose. Vrikrasana, V-R-K asana. Focus on that point. So you're getting your ankle stronger. You're gonna inhale, arms up above your head like an Egyptian. Good job. You're gonna explode those hands out. So this is volcano pose. And you're gonna wave the palms. This is waving palm pose. Sometimes you have better balance this way. Keep focusing on a point and then coming off. Here now you can shake those legs out. Kind of shake, 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 shake your head. And then coming back into Samasthiti. Again, engage the cars. So this is equal standing pose. We're gonna lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. So equal standing pose means equal corner pose. Samasthiti. It's almost like Tadasana with your palms out to the sides. But this is the Ashtanga way of coming back to your center. -ness. So focus on a point in front of you. Now we're going to lean over to your left foot. Inhale that right knee up in space, grabbing that right knee, left hand on that left hip. And rock and roll, wiggle those, those toes, rock and roll, <laughs> wiggle the ankle. Focus on a point in front of you. We're going to exhale, pull that right knee out to the side. Balancing here. If you fall out, you can fall back in. You're gonna walk that right hand down to that right ankle, pressing your inner foot into the inner thigh or your lower calf or your kickstand it and hands to the heart. So whichever you need, this opens up those hips. We did all these little gentle hip openers while laying down on our belly. So focus on a point in front of you. Now inhale that hands above your head like an Egyptian. You can explode those palms out and can wave those palms around. Again, balancing on that one ankle and then releasing everything. And you can shake it all out. And then hands to the heart, your feet as wide as the mat, if not wider. And exhale, drop down into a low squat. Again, you can grab a block nearby to sit on high, medium or low, or you can just kick that block out of the way can dynamically move to stretch out your ankles. As long as your elbows are into the insides of your thighs, hands to hands together, thumbs toward your heart, allowing the tailbone to drop. Breathe into the back. You can even dynamically play around. You can um, inhale that right arm up to the sky, breathing in. Let's stretch out that back and then exhale, drop that right hand down, inhale, left arm twisting, breathe in. And exhale, dropping down. So this is almost opening up those lungs. For those who wanna play, you can grab that block in front of you. You can place the palms in front and come into crane or crow. You can lift one toe or the opposite toe, press firmly into your palms. You can lift both toes up and wiggle those, those ankles. Focus up on a point in front of you. You want to drop your, your head to that block eventually if you are afraid of distances and hitting your head on the ground, you got a block to block it. But that will get into your wrist and you can even kind of rotate your wrist. Always good to have these wrist exercises. Curl those fingers and place the, the back of the wrist, back of the palms against each other. And eventually, eventually drop onto your tailbone. Extend those legs back out in front. Pull the flesh out from the back side. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Pull 
those elbows past those are um, those ears inhaling reaching pressing your palms up and imagine holding a tray of water flexing your feet so this is like your downward dog you're pressing firmly into those palms and then exhale four fold here you can bend those knees grab your ankles breathe into your back Slow your breath down. And Paschimottanasana, Western side stretch. Pashi pose, where the sun doesn't shine. Those four fold and then slowly, slowly inhaling back up. Grab the back of the hamstring to walk your sit bones up. Engaging the core, we're gonna come down into Shavasana. So you can also optionally take your mat to the local real estate along the wall to do, swing your legs up into a leg at the wall to you. And then we're going to exhale slowly down. Grab a blanket nearby if you want. Baby yourself. Grab a bolster. You can place the bolster underneath your knees like so. And then here you can allow the palms to relax. Close those eyes. Slow your breath down. integrating everything you've done. You've done a lot. I have a very good yoga sutra book to read that. Close those eyes, relax those eyes. Allow those eyeballs to sink into the eye sockets. And then allow your cheeks to relax. And integrating everything you've done. Relax the throat and their jawline. Allow your shoulders to relax. Allow your heartstrings to relax. Allow your heart to drop. Relax all your pelvic organs. Allow your visceral organs to drop. Relax your glutes, the back of your knees. Allow your heels to get heavier. When we are in a deep sleep, we lose our ego, our I-ness. We forget who we are and return to the cosmic eternal mind. There is a brief moment on awakening before I, consciousness, returns. When we can just glimpse this tranquil, egoless state, it should be our guide. It is a natural window onto the meditative mind in which we realize that we are one and learn to accept. When the ego is quiescent, our sense of pride lessens. We are receptive and become more understanding. We're not offended by life's affronts. We become insulated from anxiety and anguish, both within and without. Practice of yoga teaches us to deal with each task in the day as it arises, and then to put it down. This might include answering our letters or returning our calls, doing the washing up, letting anger drop as soon as the moment is past. There is an old phrase, sufficient to the day the evils thereof. It means we should contain even disagreeable challenges of life in their appropriate place, not let them fester and pollute the rest of our time. 
We learned this. Our sleep will not carry over a toxic hangover from the previous day of unresolved worries and fears. Similarly, we should not eat heavily or too late as our sleep will be turbulent, majestic. We will awaken discontented, agitated states. If we feed our minds on violent images, thoughts, and words, our unconscious will regurgitate them in disturbed dreams. Just as right imagination opens the creative mind, right sleep exhilarates the mind and brings alertness. By living each day presently and thoroughly, we earn a clear conscience Clear conscious is the best preparation for a restful and peaceful night. Now wiggle your fingers and toes. Keep your eyes closed. And shake your head left and right. Now drawing the knees in toward your heart, you can rock left and right if you like, like a boiled egg. And when you're ready, you can fall to your favorite side. You can pillow your face. You can rest there. Take two deep breaths. Take your time. Integrating everything you've done. Feel proud of yourself. You got out of bed. You got on your mat. That's a lot of challenges. And we eat challenges for breakfast. You can press up into a seated position. 